Today, we are making a video about power. Where it comes from, how we capture it, how we store it, and how we use it efficiently. Morning. Good morning. I don't think this guy wants to decide whether when it's rain or not rain. It's like... <laughs> Do you want the same thing or? Two lattes. When we first started, we had only the basics. To be perfectly honest, that's all we could afford at the time. And a lot of our choices in the beginning were largely influenced by money or lack thereof, really. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but we were so determined to get out and start sailing. And we were even more determined to not fall into debt. I think at some point I remember actually cutting up our credit cards so that we weren't <laughs> tempted to spend money we didn't have. Well, like Kika said, our initial setup was pretty basic. We got some solar panels that were pretty inexpensive, the ones designed to go in a house, and some batteries from Walmart. We found a motor on eBay for about 100 bucks, a used forklift motor, spray painted it red, called it the Electrobeak, and that's what we've been pushing our boat around with for the last four years. Our setup wasn't perfect and we knew that, but while we were in the Caribbean, we were able to generate about two and a half to three kilowatts of power a day, which was more than what we needed. It's so weird that you have to go through the clothing section of the mall uh, after you get your groceries. <laughs> This is getting heavy. So in any given day, we use about 1.5 to two and a half kilowatts of power, depending on what we're actually doing that day. If we're on anchor, we're probably running our laptops quite a bit and the lights are gonna be on pretty late at night. And then when we're offshore, we don't use our laptops hardly at all, but we do run navigation equipment. So overall, it pretty much averages out, let's say to about two kilowatts a day. All right, I got my stretch, let's go. Over the years, we've made some pretty major upgrades to our system and we've learned what works and what doesn't. And now I think we've got what I would consider a pretty efficient system. We've upgraded our motor controller to get power out of our battery bank more efficiently. And we've upgraded all of our chargers and battery chargers and solar chargers and inverters and DC converters all to Victron, which they're a bit expensive, but they're also the most efficient that we've been able to find. And it's also nice to see all of our charging data and power consumption on one screen. We also eventually got rid of our lead acid batteries and switched them out to lithium ion, and also systematically went through the boat and swapped out all of our lights to LEDs. With all of the power that we generate and are able to store, we were eventually able to install a few things that would make our lives just a little bit more comfortable, like an electric windlass, so we don't have to haul the anchor up by hand, uh, an electric head, freezer so we can keep fresh food on long passages, and a large efficient fridge, and even a microwave.
All right, guys, let's talk details. I guess we'll start with the basics, right? Our boat gets all of its power from the sun. Whether that's direct sunlight coming down, bouncing off our solar panels, or if that's heating up the earth and causing our wind to fill up our sails, the whole show is made possible by the sun. The rays come down, they bounce off our solar panels. That power is captured by both panels and it goes to our charge controller, which is Victron MPPT. And from there, it goes into our battery banks. We have 12 Battleborn Li lithium ion batteries, 100 amp hours each. So that puts us at about 15 kilowatts total storage capacity. So here is where things get a little bit more tricky. From the battery bank, the voltage coming out is 48 volt nominal. So that gets split to a inverter, which is 1200 watts, and that goes from 48 and spits out 120 volts AC. It also goes to two DC converters, which are both 300 watts, and those spit out 12 volt DC. Now these two DC converters are wired in parallel so that if any one of them were to fail, we would still retain all of our 12 volt power. And all the heavier loads like our windlass, a hot water heater, and of course the electric motor all run directly at 48 volt DC. So they're not losing any efficiencies getting converted or uh, inverted to any other voltage. So we have some straight 48 loads coming off for hot water, the windlass, and the electric beak. Now, coming off of the 120 volt inverter, we've got loads like outlets for things like laptops, plugging in the electric kettle, power tools, anything like that. Our inverter can put out 1200 watts consistently and it can peak a little bit higher than that for surge currents when you turn on an appliance. But we found 1200 watts is a pretty good medium. We can boil water, we can run all of our power tools, including the circular saw and we can even run our microwave off of that. And of course, our laptops also need 120 volts to run, although they're both very, very efficient. So we only ever plug them in maybe once or twice a day, and then the rest of the time we're working on them unplugged. Now coming off of the 12 volt breaker, we have all of our normal loads like lights, um, the navigation equipment, our head, water, all the normal things you'd run on your boat. They're all run at 12 volts, but 300 watts is plenty, and since we have them wired in parallel, they're sort of redundant systems. So one can fail and we'll still have all of our 12 volt systems working. Now, one of the cool parts about having a microwave and a hot water kettle that boils water and our laptops we can plug into the inverter, even the power tools, they all draw quite a bit of power when they're on, but we don't use them very often. So in the grand scheme of things, they don't actually draw that much power out of our battery bank, which is why we're able to use them still living off our solar panels. Things like the microwave will draw a full 1200 watts and the electric kettle will draw 1200 watts, but they're only ever on for four or five minutes at a time, which means they're not actually depleting the battery bank that much. Now on the 12 volt side, all of the things that we need to sort of run our boat on a given day averages out to about 100 watts in any given hour. So about 2.4 kilowatts in a day. Now add maybe the microwave once or twice or the electric kettle only adds another 100 to 200 watts. So all of the 12 volt stuff averages out to about two to 2.5 kilowatts in a day. And that includes running the refrigerator and the freezer, both of which draw about 40 watts, but they're not on constantly. So their consumption is actually minimized along with running all of our lights and all of our navigation gear when we're offshore. But they tend to average out because offshore we're not using our laptops as much and our lights are also off pretty much all the time offshore. We'll have the red ones and the navigation lights running at night, but the interior lights, all the LEDs, they're off. So the power kind of averages out because while we are sailing offshore, we're running our navigation gear, uh, nav lights, radar, AIS, and sometimes our hydraulic autopilot. So between the two, our averages throughout the day tend to stay about the same. 
on a really, really light day, we'll probably only use 1.5 kilowatts in a day. And on a heavier editing day, or if we're running power tools, that could go up to three or four kilowatts in a day. Which brings us to the electric motor. Now this is a very interesting one because it does consume a lot of power when we use it, but we really don't use it very often. We've never used it to go from point A to point B. Um, and if we ever had to, we would just make sure point B was near a marina and probably pull over and plug in for the night so that we could charge our batteries back up, ready to go for the next day. So on average right now, the motor that we built has a sweet spot right around three, three and a half knots. At 3.5 knots, it draws about 1.2 kilowatts, which means we can motor at about three, three and a half knots for 10 hours before our batteries deplete which is way more than we've ever needed. So this brings us back around to solar. Our daily needs, the microwave and the inverter and all of the electronics that we run, the fridge and the freezer, all of that stuff is pretty much covered by our solar panels, especially when we were down in the Caribbean. We were putting in between three and 3.5 kilowatts a day for solar. And as you can see, we were getting more than we needed, usually about a full kilowatt a day more. So if we ever used the electric motor, say we motored for two or three miles that day, we could get it back with the solar the next day or maybe the day after. Now, where we are up in the UK in the middle of the winter, we don't get a whole lot of solar. If we tipped our panels up and on a bright sunny day, we'd probably only get about six to 700 watts of solar right now. So obviously that's not enough to cover our daily needs. We're tied up to a marina for the winter, which, which we've never actually stayed this long at a marina before. So it's kind of interesting for us. We also knew we wouldn't get enough solar to run our boat if we were out on anchor, which means we'd be having to come into marinas to charge anyway. Now we do have plans to do some motor upgrades this winter, including getting power back from our propeller while we're out sailing. And we're hoping that sailing around four or five knots, we'll be able to get in two or 300 watts of power. And then when we're sailing overnight, we'll actually be able to put in quite a bit of power so that we don't have to rely so heavily on our solar panels. We also have considered getting a wind turbine, although most of the little ones that most people have on their boats are just too small for what we need. But we would need it to run at 48 volts. We would also need it to be big enough so that we could hoist it up in the foredeck on a nice windy day, charge up our batteries and then pull it back down again. Because if we were gonna mount it on the back by our solar panels, it would most likely shade the panels and then cause them to lose efficiency. I hope that helped clarify uh, how much power we make and how much power we use. If you guys wanna know any more details about the specifics of each individual appliance that we have and how much power it draws, uh, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll make a specific video about the individual power draws of all the things we have on board. If that's something that you guys might be interested in, let us know, comments below. Hold up. Remember last episode when we said, you're gonna have to find out what happened to our old fridge in the next episode. And then, literally a few seconds ago, we showed you that new fridge. Well, let's rewind a little bit so that we're all on the same page. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Wait, wait, wait. Wrong story. Once upon a time, we received a fridge from the medic. And if you remember, it was a catalyst of our entire galley renovation. It worked out well and was very efficient, but it did have a few minor problems. The main one being the plastic hinges that broke quite early on. But since it worked just fine, we kept it. Now fast forward another year, we found ourselves at the Southampton Boat Show, when a few guys from the medic came to visit us on our boat. We mentioned the hinges to them. Yeah, yeah. Boom! Four months later, the newest model arrived at our doorstep. We just finished unboxing the new CFX3 from Dometic. It's our new fridge, but it's the same capacity as the old one, except it's about 0.8 of a centimeter wider. Same dimensions in almost every other way. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit wider, which means it's not gonna fit in the drawer that we built for our old fridge.
And now, back to, to the, the future. future. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're not worried at all. What are we talking about? I believe, in my professional opinion, we are talking about efficiency. Efficiency. Yeah. Right. Having very efficient larger appliances, like the fridge and the freezer, make a big difference because they're the ones that run the most and use the most amount of power at any given day. Mm -hmm. So any amount of wattage we can save there makes a large difference. Um, but there's also a bunch of little things that we've done that help us conserve power. Yeah, such as switching all the lights to LEDs, shutting the inverter off whenever we don't need it, mm -hmm. and also a big thing that helped, uh, especially for us because we edit a lot, is switching our computers to a um, better performing laptop. My older computer would just <laughs> take off. It's kind every, of like a jet engine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Every two hours we had to plug it in. Yeah. And that draws a lot of power. But now with the laptops we can edit almost all day mm -hmm. without ever needing to plug it in. Yeah, that's actually made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, we also have an electronic, well, a hydraulic autopilot, which consumes electricity as well. Um, but we don't use it that often because we have a wind vane, which consumes no power at all. Um, I think on our Atlantic crossing in 18 days, we never turned on our electronic autopilot. So we can actually run our boat without electricity at all. We mm -hmm. can, it, it'll self steer with the wind vane, obviously wind, propels the boat forward and then if we need to navigate we have we usually carry paper charts at least uh, enough that we can get back to shore and then we can find out our location with a handheld GPS or you know on our phone or something like that yeah so yeah I mean we could technically get hit by lightning lose all our power fry everything and we could still make it back to shore where we would fix all that stuff and of course if you want more information about this project or any other projects we do we keep all of our project details in the UMA Vault. And we'll also try our very best to leave links in the description of this video to as many of the things that we've been talking about along with some of the install videos that we've made in the past of all the equipment that we've been installing. So if you find any of that useful, check out down there for more details as well. Yeah, and then if you have any more questions, just make sure you leave a comment down below and give us a thumbs up you just can't one. give two or just one <laughs> and they're all the same size you can't give us a giant thumbs up it's a one size fit all thumbs up and but we appreciate it you can't <laughs> smash it you can really just click it subscribe if you haven't already so that you can enjoy more of our videos and i promise not all of them are going to be super technical but i know some of you do appreciate it we've so. gotten tons of questions about power since we yes. keep adding more and more electronics to our boat so hopefully this answer is most of them. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there is. Um, but yeah, and that is it for now. So we'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Can we actually do a cheers this oh, time? Oh, yeah. We have actual alcohol and actual cheers. glasses. Cheers. And we it has a really good. good sound, too. Like, check it out. <laughs>